So we're here looking at Motorola's new flagship, the Moto Z2 Force. If you remember last year, Motorola had the Moto Z, uh, which had this crazy modular system on the back. So you get a giant uh, connector on the back here, a big camera uh, hump. And what that does is that holds Moto mods like these things in place. Uh, so this is the new 360 camera. And you can see you have all the little, all the little pogo pins here. And you can kind of connect the two of them and they'll they'll snap into place. Now the problem with this is Motorola committed to all of this last year and they committed to doing this for like two more generations. So Motorola's phone design basically has to stand still for the next uh, two to three years. Uh, so what you get is a phone that looks just like last year's version. Uh, you have a giant uh, fingerprint reader down here at the bottom, massive bezels, uh, which can't compete with any of the new designs this year from Samsung or LG. Uh, and weirdly, you have on-screen buttons, which I disabled. The insides are new, you know, Snapdragon 835, uh, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, a micro SD slot. But uh, the, the problem I have with this is just your, the outside is, it has to be stuck like this. Because if, say, you wanted to move the fingerprint reader on the back, you can't do that because the Moto Mods are here. Uh, if you wanted to make the camera hump smaller, you can't do that because it has to hold the Moto Mods in place. So you're kind of stuck with this design. Uh, what is here is, is kind of nice. The back is aluminum, uh, which feels really great. It is razor thin. It's six millimeters, they said, I think, which is way too thin. And the battery in this is much smaller than last year's. Um, it's 22% smaller. Um, so the battery life wasn't super great last year. It's not going to be super great this year. Uh, you can get a stupid Moto Mod for a battery that hooks onto the back, but who wants to pay money for the extra half of a phone that's missing here? So uh, new features this year: you have a dual, you have a dual camera system on the back. So they managed to squeeze two 12 megapixel cameras in here. Uh, you get laser and phase change autofocus, and basically the two 12 megapixel cameras let you do that weird fake depth of field effect uh, that everybody seems to love. There's still no headphone jack, USB-C port on the bottom. Uh, the giant fingerprint sensor here will enable you to turn on a one-button navigation system. Uh, so you can tap this to go home, you can swipe right for recent apps, and you can swipe left for back. So that's kind of interesting. And then the on-screen buttons down here go away. So uh, this is the 360 camera Moto Mod. What is the official name of this? 360 camera, okay, great. Uh, so this has a cute little rubber uh, cap on the top of it. And you pry this off and you slap it on the back of your phone correctly. There we go. To open the camera app and you get this crazy uh, 360 camera view. Look, there's a, ooh, awesome. Um, Oh, okay, this is the front and back camera feed. Uh, so you get a full kind of flattened view here and a better view up here. And you can take a picture. And now we have this giant, now we have this giant 360, like an instant uh, photo sphere, which is kind of neat. The lighting in here, oh geez, wow. The lighting in here is absolutely terrible. Um, it's red to match the box. Uh, but but this looks neat. This takes 4K video, um, which if you want to see what that looks like, you can go on YouTube right now and look at uh, 360 degree 4K videos. Uh, they are not great because while 4K seems like a lot, 4K in a 16.9 box looks way better than 4K in a 360 degree view. I usually figure like 8K uh, is pretty good for these giant 360 videos. <laughs> look at my hand. That's cool. <laughs> the problem I have with this, if I was gonna have a problem with it, is that this is $300. Uh, and it only works with this phone and other Motorola phones. And it's like, you can get Bluetooth 360 cameras that will work with all sorts of phones and you don't have to buy a Motorola phone next year. So this is the biggest, craziest Moto mod out there. This is Moto Gamepad. And, you know, look, you, you snap your phone right into the middle of this, and it's like an Android-powered Nintendo Switch. Real racing. All right, yes. I don't want to make an in-app purchase. Okay, so now we can actually play this game. So anyway, if you've ever tried to use, like, the on-screen 
Analog sticks, those are horrible. This is gonna be way better. I mean, this is... Wait, what's happening? Okay. Is any of these gas? This analog stick is way better than the silly on-screen uh, control that you'd normally get. Um, but, this game demonstrates, you know, one of the things I was worried about, that compatibility here is not great. Like, none of these buttons is gas. Because it wants to be a cell phone game, so gas happens automatically. Uh, you've got a pair of uh, shoulder buttons up here that are super duper clicky. These uh, ABXY buttons are also really clicky, and so is the D-pad. Like, this could probably be a little... A little uh, softer or easier to use. I mean, this feels like the weird, like, DS uh, game pads that were super clicky. The springs on these is not that stiff, but it's okay. It's all going to be a huge upgrade over uh, over the silly on-screen buttons. I think what you would need more than anything is, like, maybe an emulator app would be pretty awesome on this. Uh, play some old-school video games that you have already purchased at a store, of course. 80, 80 bucks. 80 bucks for the game controller. Cool, okay. And then we've got Start and Select and Home. And uh, this has some kind of battery built into it, doesn't it? This has some kind of battery built yeah, into it, right? Yeah, it's a uh, 1,035 milliamp battery. Okay. It's going to get you about eight hours of usage on that. Yeah, cool. So a little extra battery for when you're blowing your phone up with video games. Oh, and a headphone jack. Yep. And a USB jack port. And USB -C awesome. This does not fold up, though. So it's always this big. Even if you take, it would be nice if you could take your phone out and like break it in half or fold it up or slide it together. But it's always this big, and and I mean, here I, I can I can try. Yeah. I can try this. This ain't. There, there we go. It's great. It's fun to play with. It would take a bunch of getting used to, but it, it's it's kind of neat. I'd still rather have a fingerprint reader on the back and way slimmer bezels and a taller screen. Uh, but we're we're stuck with this design for two more years. That's Motorola, standing still, while the rest of the industry is coming up with uh, new and interesting designs, but um, we're, we're stuck with this for however many years until they want to give up on the whole Moto Mod thing.